Hey everyone, Keegan here from Curious Engineering, starting off a brand new series about Altera and about Field Programmable Gate Arrays, or FPGAs. So why Altera, you might be asking. So a little known company by the name of Intel decided at the end of 2015 that they were going to acquire Altera for $16.7 billion. So why would they do that? According to Moore's Law, we're going to double our computing power at certain intervals of time. Now, we're approaching a barrier limited by the physical or atomic structure of silicon itself. Our Intel's solution is to incorporate FPGA type structures into their processing architecture. Cool, so that's the, uh, some of the motivation behind this video. Now, the second thing is why FPGAs versus, versus uh, application specific integrated circuits or ASIC circuits. It's a classic battle, obviously I'm not going to solve that here and why, but a few solutions or reasons why FPGA is great. First and foremost, it's low cost. It's time efficient and it's recustomizable. Time efficient in the sense of the time it takes you to uh, change your design is not limited by the physical tape out or the physical layout of the structure. It's recustomizable. Once you have a solution implemented, you can change that solution. You can add additional applications or features to it uh, with relative ease. Cool. So, what is it about FPGAs? There's really two big players in that space. So, there's Xilinx, which has their own solution, and Altera. And these two companies have been battling for a very long time. Doesn't matter which one is is better. Obviously, Intel acquired Altera, which is kind of some focus on this video and why we're kind of moving into that space. But uh, personally, I've used both and each one has their advantages and disadvantages. In this video I'm going to focus on the Altera solutions primarily because of their ease of use and their um, learning applications or uh, space that they have to to really get uh, someone new up and running. So let's, uh, let's check that out. So if we go to the Altera University program this is the starting point for everything. And again, you know, I've mentioned that I've used both and I found that the Altera solution is, is better. Uh, so if we go to the Altera University program, if we look at the materials, you have your tutorials section. This offers both Verilog and VHDL solutions. I'll go into that more later. But again, it talks to you about getting the software installed, uh, running basic uh, tests like timing an analysis or moving into uh, different kind of modules of the software. The next big thing which I want to jump into is this thing here, the laboratory solutions or exercises I should say. This is where the rubber meets the road, this is where you're going to struggle, this is where you're going to learn the most. So focusing on this, this is going to be the next big section of this entire um, uh, offering of, offerings of videos that I'm going to have is going through these exercises. So they have your kind of logic circuit uh, digital logic design type things down at the gate level as well as kind of your computer organization or at the C or assembly level kind of understanding that bare metal application. Cool. So you might be asking yourself what else do I need to get started? So you'll obviously need the Cordis Prime software. So this is a free software application from Altera. It's relatively easy to install. I can go into another video on installing that because there's some tips and tricks with that. But you'll need that first and foremost, which where you can reach at if you go to materials, software. This is where you can download it. The next big thing is probably you're going to need a board itself. So Teresic is a great solution for that. They'll take the Altera chip, FPGA chip, and incorporate it into their board so you can have all the peripherals. So which one should you, to ch should you choose? So the products, the DE main boards. This is your development and education section where you have all these boards that are specifically built around learning the system. I would recommend about two different boards. So the DE0 Nano, that incorporates not only the FPGA chip, but it also includes the ARM Cortex application. For a low price of about $90 if you're a student, or $100 if you're a hobbyist or just doing this on your own. This is a great board, but what it doesn't incorporate is your seven segment displays. It only has a few switches and a, and a few push buttons. If you really want to get a full experience, especially coupled with the Altera University program, I would really recommend getting the DE1 SOC board. Again, this is uh, incorporates all of those things of the other board, but it has so many more uh, peripherals that really help you 
understand the different um, <coughs> peripherals themselves, I should say, but uh, just kind of get the full experience out of your board. And it's around $175 or about $250 uh, if you're doing it on your own. Cool. So I just have my notes to make keep me on track here. Uh, the next big thing is, uh, which I kind of alluded to with uh, Verilog and VHDL. So these are hardware description languages. It's great to have a background of, in those. You don't need to if you don't. Uh, tons of online applications, but if you're interested in a textbook, I would recommend these three solutions. Obviously, the first one being this book. Uh, this is a great one that I that I learned on, and uh, I really find it very useful. So it's a great book. Um, you can find these solutions online through a book zz.org for the online uh, library, or uh, feel free to acquire your own um, textbook, physical copy itself. Something I use quite often. The next uh, programming language you probably incorporate or, or experience going through these university uh, laboratory examples is going to be assembly. So assembly is down at one of the lowest levels of kind of the processor level, where you're going to specifically for for this board you're going to be using the ARM architecture. The book I recommend is going to be this book here. It's a great book. It's uh, very clear and concise. Uh, feel free to. Uh, to look more into that, and the next thing is obviously C. C is like C is it, it, it goes way back. It's it's really the language that goes from hardware to your software levels. So it's a it's a great one to have, and something that uh, you you will continue to experience if you're down at that bare metal or down at that embedded level. The books I recommend are going to be these three. This is the one I've used a lot. I really like it. Lots of examples, lots of uh, opportunities for you to really practice and uh, and learn it inside and out. So, awesome guys. Well, that's really all I had. Just wanted to provide some motivation and uh, why you might want to be moving or looking into this space at this time point in time. Uh, anyway, so more videos to come, uh, specifically going through those laboratory examples. So yeah, that's uh, that's all I had. So uh, we'll see you guys and have a good night.